He's the man to do the damage. Oh! oh! The oh! As he oh! looks for another headshot! Oh! Occasionally, I still get stories, you know, that come to me, and I'm still going to break them. I'm still going to put them out there because, you know, it's in the public interest. So, the latest story uh, I did uh, after the uh, Peter Zhang TSM, you know, coaching uh, thing was about our old friend Hunden, who is a Danish CSGO coach, a former CSGO in-game leader who had been banned on two separate occasions for two separate infractions by ESIC. The first being for using the famous coaching bug that enabled you to see things you shouldn't be able to see as a coach, uh, you know, during the online era. And he publicly had come out and confessed to it and then sort of spent his time trying to uh, incriminate all of the heroic players. But on top of that, he was also then banned, I think, for another two years because he had leaked strats from Heroic to Astralis because Astralis had offered him a coaching job and for whatever reason, he wanted to fuck over Heroic on the way out the door. This move prompted Heroic to not even take him to the event Astralis and Heroic were playing each other at, the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne from last year. And obviously when the e sick ban came in, uh, he didn't get the head coaching job to replace Zonic at Astralis. He sort of uh, wouldn't have been considered good optics, especially as Astralis back when he was on Heroic and back when the cheating occurred. Funnily enough, against Heroic in one of the two games he confessed to, they basically were very vocal about how they hate cheaters. So, we're all up to speed with you know, who Hunden is and what his supposed infractions are. So I published this story, which I'd heard for a while behind the scenes, that Hunden was continuing to work with Astralis, but in a capacity that wasn't maybe as a coach, but he was doing some coaching and they were trying to keep it quiet. It was being done through a partnership uh, where he was creating content for Aim Lab, which is like an esports training tool. And basically it was their way of financially rewarding him for the fucked up shit he'd done without it ever being official and in a means that they would have to make a public announcement. That's what sources have essentially told me. So I went and did it and I typed it all up, didn't I? I did, did what I do, you know, I put the story out on Deserter, thought this will be a fairly open and, and shut one. People won't like it. People won't like the fact that, you know, Hunden is uh, still, uh, you know, in that working relationship, as you can see it says here, uh, despite having been sanctioned by ESIC on two occasions. And there it is. And, you know, the story, I won't read all my, my handiwork. It's sort of weird to commentate a story you wrote. But, you know, ultimately, you can see we set the scene. He was speculated to take over. Basically, earlier this year, Deserto was contacted by several sources that work in the Danish esports scene, all of whom requested anonymity for fear of reprisals from Astralis. If you don't know, by the way, guys, if you're still sort of clinging on to this notion that Astralis are a really nice organization and super cool people, they've got got the Danish esports scene, you know, they rule it with an iron fist. Uh, and a lot of people are afraid to even sort of publicly criticize the org if they work in Denmark because their influence goes everywhere. It goes to esports publications, it goes to sponsorships, it goes to Danish companies that sponsor esports stuff, it goes to tournament organizers. It's all over. Astralis are essentially the biggest show in town if that town happens to be uh, uh, Denmark. But anyway, they said, uh, you know, that uh, they had evidence that Hunden was still working with the Astralis uh, organization. It says here, once the ban happened, uh, they knew that Hunden would need a job and he had shown them loyalty, one source said. So they found a way to pay him to work there without him being a coach. So they wouldn't have to say anything. He's been there working with the players and they will give him an official job once his ban is over. There's other aspects to this I'll talk to in a little bit, like additional details I didn't put out, but I've talked about on stream before, so they're not um, um, secrets. So then I uh, found out that basically it was being done in, in partnership with AimLab, that training tool. I got in touch with them. 
uh, and they said, yes, State Space Labs, which is like their parent company, is working on an open video content pl uh, platform called Playerbase that would allow anyone to create their own gaming content. Uh, think like the Patreon of gaming. Uh, it's in the very early stages, but a number of teams will have content available when their platform launches. Our partners are free to vet and choose their own talent and resources for the production of their content, subject to their compliance with our terms of service and community guidelines. So they absolutely confirm, yep, Hunden's been working on this project. We're aware of it. Astralis are aware of it. Everyone's aware of it apparently except the general public now look i'm not gonna get into like a broader thing because like it's a really weird space to occupy intellectually let me explain what i mean i don't think hunden should be punished in perpetuity for the things he did i also think if you cheat as a player or cheat as a coach and you do a suspension for it it shouldn't prevent you from getting work in that same field unless the egregiousness of the offense would warrant some sort of lifetime ban in hunden's case it doesn't uh you know that not determined by isik not determined by the general uh, public but i'll also add that it seems kind of fucked up to me that during a period of time he's essentially been ostracized from the esports scene remember not for one infraction not just for the original cheating but now for something else where he has been mass at best massively unprofessional to his employers uh it just seems really fucking weird that everyone in the danish scene is falling over themselves to give hunden money I don't understand it, as we'll get into. I also have my strong suspicions that no matter what Astralis say, and no matter what anyone else says, they did try and cover this up, and it's certainly based on things I, I, I saw tweeted after the story came out, which, by the way, I went through every channel properly. I didn't just repeat hearsay. I didn't, when the sources came to me, even though I had multiple sources, I didn't just publish it. I went to AIM Labs, you know, like I went to Astralis. They confirmed that or everything in the reporting. You know, it's like, well, with the minor quibbling detail of they say that he's not doing any coaching, but they wouldn't even need to deny that. So it, it, it all seems to be a bit but. But anyway, the thing I think has gone on here is like, for example, why is Hunden tweeting uh, or putting on Instagram new beginnings and showing him with a bow tie, like mixing cocktails, right? As if he's had to go get a job outside of esports. Why is he doing that? Well, my suspicion is he's done that as part of this clandestine operation or essentially keep him in esports, working, getting money and not having anybody say anything negative about it because he's like, his name is synonymous with being a cheating piece of shit uh, and a bad person. I mean, remember that it wasn't just the cheating at all, the leaking of strats to an org that were giving him a financial inducement. He also had secretly recorded players and, you know, took documents and emails and screenshots to try and create a story that incriminated the organization. He did it to someone with, you know, mental health issues, you know, attention deficit disorder. It's like really fucked up. You know, it's like, it, he's not somebody that would like scream out to me, like, this is the employee you want. But anyway, I reached out to Astralis, uh, and I'll just read you their comment in full. Uh, for the sake of good order, there is nothing clandestine about Mr. Peterson's involvement in the, in the project, the AIM Lab project. Obviously, nothing clandestine about it. You just haven't said anything about it. No one said anything about it, actually. Uh, which is a part of our partnership with AIM Lab, as you say. Your information is correct, but as the project and our obligations towards AIM Lab have already been finalized, his work is done, and his contract with Pixel TV, which, by the way, is a, a, a an entity that is owned by astralis as i put here in the the, the link uh is set to expire uh, by the end of this month while he was contracted by pixel tv in which we hold a majority stake mr peterson has been in the very open astralis office on several occasions spoiler if your office can sort of just have people wandering around that's not a good idea probably uh, on several occasions to discuss the deliveries to our partner. He also worked out of the Pixel TV office, and since everyone in the industry here knows his face, it would be quite a task to keep his presence and work for Pixel on behalf of Astralis a secret. And yet, 
That is exactly what you did. Uh, he has not been a part of the Astralis operation, but worked as a subcontractor under Pixel TV with a specific and limited task. He was offered the contract because he is by far the most qualified for the project. Now, remember, the project is content creation. As you saw there, content creation going towards the promotion of a Patreon-like platform for gamers. Why is Hunden the most qualified? How does that make any sense? Why would he be the most qualified for that? What... Has he worked in any of that? Never worked on a project like that before? Any tech experience? Like, no, he's just a he's just a coach for CSGO. So he certainly wouldn't be uh, the by far the most qualified for that project. Uh, it seems to be strange. When asked why Hunden would be interacting with players, the Astralis rep, because that was what sources had said they'd seen, the players are the main characters in the content he has developed and instructed. So he has indeed been in contact with them th during this project and worked with them. The release of the whole project, including the content, is up to AimLab. I would guess it is for release later this year. They work with different contributors from other teams as well. So in other words, we don't even know when we're gonna see this content. We don't even know if this content exists or what the purposes of the content are. Astralis added they would never have announced Peterson's involvement publicly due to the nature of his work, stating they never announced the hiring of temporary contractors. Freelance resources and independent contractors are a part of our day-to-day -day operation. And so far this year, we have worked with more than a dozen different contractors without announcing a single one. They also added, apropos of nothing, uh, that they would be happy to give him a job, which is concerning. Uh, considering this is obviously an entity that complained uh, about his cheating uh, very loudly. You remember Nicola Naomi as we'll get to, you know, come to the office and all of that drama. So uh, it turns out he did. He went to the office and stayed there and uh, ended up working. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, we would like to comment in general, though, that once Mr. Peterson's ban has expired, uh, should we have the need, we would not have a second thought about offering him a position as an analyst or the like, nor should any other esports organization. He should not be treated any different than any other coach or player who's received a temporary ban, not during the ban and not after the ban expired. We condemn cheating of any kind, except Hunden's, and nature and we will not accept any of such anywhere in our in our organization but we also strongly believe that nobody should be punished beyond their action and any sentence received it's simply not the way we believe the world or our industry should work so again the problem i've got is uh, there was a number of organizations funnily enough including heroic who, when these cheating coaches got caught, put them into other roles and kept them on at the orgs. Because ESIC is essentially a toothless entity that can't police what you do, they have no authority to say what your hiring practices are or anything like that. They can only say, you know, you're, th this guy can't be at an ESIC sanctioned tournament or they can't compete. We don't know what they were doing. And obviously, tons of, tons of cheating coaches uh, came in and basically were given secondary jobs. They were given opportunities to be analysts. Some of them were just given other coaching jobs at, at other orgs. They weren't, like, universally fired. Some people got moved and then brought back. Uh, it, it was, you know, and, and for me, the problem is, like, maybe there's some you can, like, make a compelling argument for, like, yeah, obviously, they're, um, you know, they, they weren't all that bad. It was like a very, very minor infraction. It was only a 30-day ban, you know, whatever. All good, right? But Hunden was one of the most egregious. He was one of the biggest names among the original 37. And he then subsequently went and did a bunch of other shit that warranted a breach of integrity. So much so it got him banned for two years. Now that, to me, is a serial offender. And if you're a serial offender, then like, it, what does it say about our industry that um, we're hiring people that have these like serial offenses against their name? Not just hiring them, but going out of our way, like Astralis did, to find a grounds to hire them. I don't think that's good uh, for the industry at all. I think, like, they can say we don't tolerate cheating, but we also don't think punishing people beyond the purview of ESIC is the way our industry should work. Well, no, it's more sinister than that. You've actively gone out of your way to reward him while he's done that. And that brings me to the broader point about what I strongly suspect has gone on. 
And this is what pisses me off about how people miss the point of the story, right? The point of the story isn't, oh, he's banned by Isik uh, and Astralis are working with him. Ooh, that's bad enough. But that's like an element of it, right? The point of the story was when he was at Heroic, he sabotaged Heroic. And he leaked strats to Astralis after receiving a financial inducement from Astralis to go and be their coach, right? The financial inducement is the job, right? He was caught, banned by Isik, and yet, despite that, Astralis have come up with an, uh, this notion that to help AimLab, a sponsorship partner of theirs, build a Patreon-like gaming platform, Hunden must absolutely be employed to do it and astralis did it by not employing him directly but employing him under a subsidiary company they own now i want you to imagine this right company a has worker a worker a sabotages company a company b who are company a's biggest rival give that guy a job employee a can't go to company b though because it looks bad because the ombudsman of this industry decide, oh, you know, we're going to sanction him or punish him. So company B, using a subsidiary, company C, that they own, hire him anyway and give him money. That, to me, looks like you've essentially rewarded him for sabotaging your rivals. That's the story. That, like, there were rumours flying around at the time that it was some sort of fucked up form of corporate espionage. Remember that you had Heroic above Astralis in the world rankings, gaining ground. Gaining ground in this really closed Danish market of, like, 7 million people. And then Hunden decides to cheat, cheat against Astralis, try and get all of Heroic's players banned, even though they've changed ownership. Rats them all out for the NDAs and fuck knows what else. Says it's the biggest scandal of what, uh, you know, goes on that Danish TV thing. D, D top dot TV too. Ratting them all out. And then gets a job at Astralis anyway. Holy shit. It makes absolutely, like, no sense for an org to do that afterwards. Because you could be next. Like, Heroic found that out. Heroic kept him on, and he betrayed him. And betrayed him because he wanted to go to Astralis. So for me, I want people to start looking into what that says. Because there's absolutely... Again, if esports was a serious industry, this would be a huge deal. Again, think about it like it was football. If a manager at a football club, like let's say Manchester United's manager, Sabotage United, you'd think he was doing that at the moment, wouldn't you? And then took a job at City, right, immediately after, and maybe even sold a bunch of the best players to City. You would just be like, yeah, that's dodgy as fuck. Of course it is. So I don't know how people missed that part of the story, but they did. It was really weird because the original write-up of the article just mentioned that a source had said something along the lines of he could be operating in a capacity that would be prevented by his ESIC ban. Meaning he could be on Discord during events. He could be going to events with the team. Nobody knows. And I put that in. And what was really weird was... Uh, like HLTV journalists just pounced on that one like tiny little phrase not even a direct quote right not my words either uh, like it was just weird they were like going oh this report is vague it's like it's not vague it's absolutely explicit in its reporting and it's very clear and easy to understand keep in mind obviously we know about HLTV their parent company had a shareholder uh, in on the Astralis board not now but, you know, we also remember when they gave him, like, that weird fucked up... After I did my report on him. And by the way, you'll notice, HLTV, when these big orgs get caught doing bad stuff, they never say, report from Richard Lewis, like they do for, like, a Nell Rosner move or whatever. If HLTV is the definitive history of Counter-Strike, there's so much bad stuff they've, like, never even mentioned. Because I've reported on it. Because their owner's, like, some fucking lunatic from old-school esports who, like, he still got beef because some fucking intern worker I had at Cadred like 
embedded an HL TV photo on a Cadred report one time. That's how mad these people are. They get into like uh, these companies and all they hear is like bad stuff about oh your enemies with Richard and your enemies with Cadred and it's like like uh, guys I couldn't give a fuck like I couldn't give a fuck I couldn't even give a fuck that right now you're doing 10 year anniversary of CSGO and you've had to skip straight to 2014 because you know you might want to talk a little bit about how you were never going to cover CSGO and you and you were running negative headlines about the game you know you didn't want it to succeed but now of course uh, the, the, the god tier, they were the saviors of the game and thank god there was a real coverage site and all that you know it's just nonsense i was there i know exactly what they said and what they did it, it's like reflexive like i don't even want to argue with people on twitter anymore it is a zero-sum game but this type of thing is just really weird to quote tweet me uh, here and say uh, Hunden can technically coach whoever he wants outside of events. What role would he be precluded from by Isik? Rather vague information here. How is it vague? If he acted in a coaching capacity during an event, he'd be precluded from doing it. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the sentence, but the, whoever edited it afterwards, and again, I don't edit my own articles. I turn them over to an editor. I'm an editor at large. I don't do any actual editing. It's a prestige position. Um, I explained it. That sentence simply means coaching. I'm guessing a memo went out or something. I'm really not sure how anything in the report is vague. I mean, you just saw it yourself. It's pretty pretty straightforward he's not banned from coaching in general so are you implying he coached a team at an ESIC member event and obviously i'm not implying anything i'm repeating that a source had concerns that he would be operating in a way that would be precluded by ESIC. again this is not vague it's not vague so i said i'm not implying anything there's nothing vague in the report and then I didn't see you tweeting like this when other orgs move ban coaches to non-coaching roles. Because remember, they didn't have to do that. You could have just kept your coaches on. Then said, I'm not here to defend anyone. This is against Stryker. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what you're trying to say. It's very clear. Ethics aside, Hunden can coach, just not at events. But your sources are claiming he's in a role that would be in violation of E6 ban. Now he knows what my sources are saying, even when we're not using direct quotes by them. And by saying that, uh, they imply he coached Astralis at an event Isik is a member of. Or am I following the wrong logic train? Yes, turns out you were. And then, I'm pissed off at this point. Fair enough, shouldn't have jumped to this. Uh, what you're doing is what HLTV has a track record of doing, and that's publicly defending Astralis and turning a blind eye to any potential wrongdoing that org might engage in. We both know where that goes on, and let's not argue on Twitter, it's a waste of time. Now, what, what did I mean by we both know why that goes on? It goes on because HLTV is a Danish website owned by a Danish guy, you know, they're, they're owned by a Danish company. Uh, they've always been historically Danish. All of their big staffers are Danish. They hang around with like Astral Astralis executives and stuff at events. I've seen it. So the idea, so I, I shouldn't have to just say this. I, 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 like I say, I've got no issue with HLTV. It's hugely important to see us go. Without it, where would, this, where would, it, where would we be? As a, as a scene. I've got nothing against the workers. I had nothing against Stryker, but I can never think of a reason to ever want to talk to him again. Uh, off this. And it's like really fucked up. These dudes come up to me at events and they're super nice and friendly. And then you get on social media and you just lose your mind. It's just like really ridiculous. I mean, to give you an idea of wh what they're like, I mean, look at this. Like, hang on. This is Nomad. Like, he is one of esports' biggest weirdos. Like, I've met many weirdos. But, like, Nomad is a guy who is like, got this thing wrong with his brain to the point where he can't, if something's wrong, he'll criticize you for doing it. But then if HLTV, he's super defensive about H HLTV, he built it, you know. If, if HLTV do it, it's not wrong. And it's not even the same. And in fact, did they even do it? It's crazy. Like, he gets caught in it all the time. He's been doing it for as long as I've had the misfortune to, to have to like, even have these, like, super rare interactions with him. I carried on saying about it just means coaching. And he goes, what kind of clown defense is this of your article? Why don't you ask your colleague, Mira, about the disclosures? Uh, again, referring to this, they failed to disclose about the fact that one of their board was an uh, executive on Astralis. It's important. You have to disclose these things. So he, he, here's an example. Hex from Optic bought a piece of Deserto. 
And we have to disclose it all the time. And I remember fucking Hasbro losing his mind going, DeSerto are super biased against me because Hex controls them and all that. And it's like, you know, you have to disclose this stuff. You have to disclose it, right? And I, you know, if people don't, it wouldn't matter if it was DeSerto who cut me a check or HLTV who certainly never would in a million years. The, the, it's the community. They've got to trust the news. Like, it's... That's all there is to it. And if there's any chance that it might be untrustworthy, you've got to let people know. So anyway, he basically shit on Luis Mira, who now works at DeSoto. Luis Mira worked for years at HLTV. He was the best thing about that website when he was there. He was the only one trying to break, like, actual news when he was there, like, the type of stories I write. He's been a super nice guy. I've got tweets going back to like 2012 about how he was the only guy at HLTV who was ever like cooperative and nice. And he's got so little respect, so little fucking respect for his former workers that he's just publicly saying, oh, Lewis Mira was the editor in chief at the time. Why don't you fucking criticize? Like, uh, it's just unbelievable. Like, why would you shit on a guy that did nothing? Like, by the way, for near, like, the pay, the pay people make at HLTV is a fucking industry joke for the work that they do. It always has been historically. It's one of the reasons why they never really got in bigger names. You know, they could have had, like, when, when HLTV was really big, they could have had people in there. You know, they had, like, negotiations to bring Thorin in and stuff. It's just never, they've never been financially competitive like that. So anyway, he, he said that, and then I said, I don't need to defend the article. And he went, so you did not edit it after it was published. Now, again, the, ed the, the editing was, they changed the sentence, which was, may have been precluded from, to, may have been precluded from, if at an event. That was the, clar just a clarification, it's what Stryker said he wanted. But no, they were still angry about it. They tweeted about me for the rest of the day. It's just surreal, like, like to still have these, like, pathetic esports beefs in 2022 that are based on like 2008 like how how can you still be mad like i don't give a shit like i won guys like it's fine like i i got to be on tv i got to do a bunch of cool stuff esports is actually you know despite everything the industry shit now it, it did all right for me i'm happy with it i've got no ill feeling towards you i'm glad you sold hl tv i'm glad you managed to find somebody to buy it even if you did have to slap ads all over it get rich fast or whatever nonsense you said you do you brother you know what i mean i'm not about that i don't give a fuck there ain't no beef like, you're an essential part. You're like a touchstone of the CS Go scene. You know? Like, it's it's fine. But anyway, he decided he wanted to keep arguing. He got wrecked. Like, he, he got actually wrecked. Because he kept bringing up the disclosure thing. And it's just, like, super surreal. Here it is. This was the original tweet he was replying to. Uh, if we're here asking irrelevant questions, may I ask why it took HLTV literally multiple months of being publicly called out? To begin adding disclosures about financial ties to Astralis. We added the disclosures the 18th of November, less than a month after it was brought to our attention. Remember, it's brought to the world's attention by uh, Thorin. Uh, any other poorly researched questions? November 18, 2020, when HLTV was acquired in February 2020, are you seriously bragging it took you almost nine months of having it specifically being told to HLTV to get a disclosure done? Surely this is a joke. We were not aware because it did not matter. This is the this is what I mean. This is the HLTV way with with Nomad. It's it's mental. We weren't aware because it didn't matter. It does matter. It objectively matters. You agree that it matters. You added the disclosure, but it doesn't matter apparently, right? This is a, this is a guy by the way who was overseeing the news output on HLTV. I mean, you know, you you start to ask questions in your mind. We were not aware because it did not matter. HLTV APS is and was entirely insulated from Better Collective. Uh, this is the other guy that owns it, Martin. Uh, less crazy, but still a knob. Um, and I, the two legal directors, Better Collective cannot make decisions with regards to HLTV. Only we can. And like I say, on and on and on it goes. Like they were, they were still arguing about the disclosure uh, with uh, Lagger 15 there that you can see. It went on for ages. And it's like, guys, like, all of this has started because you're trying to say my report was vague. Like, when it wasn't, we added three words, and people were going, yeah, well, it changes the whole meaning of the sentence. It doesn't. It means if he, if he, works, in, if he works as a coach in that capacity at an event or, in, or being on a Discord when they're at an event or having communications with a team when they're at an event or doing a veto remotely when they're at an event, all of that would be precluded from. 
Uh, that's it. Again, by the way, no strong feeling or any, uh, no criticism whatsoever of Astralis looking like what they've done. No one cares about that, right? No one wants to talk about that. So that was weird. And then, because, you know, I was pretty polite. I, I, like, considering it's Astralis especially. And I went and, like, you know, got got in touch with them all. Like, went through the proper channels. This is the press guy for Astralis. And uh, this tweet here, right? Because, like, a fan, an Astralis fan, says, like, say this isn't so. Because I'll tell you... To their credit, and I've been critical of the Astralis fan base, a number of Astralis fans said, like, we don't want Hunden associated with our team, with our squad, you know? Like, we don't, we don't like it. Whatever you feel about it, we don't like it. And it's good to see. Fans should feel that way, you know? If you've got players, for example, that are associated with negative stuff, you don't just go, oh, but they did that negative stuff before we were working with them, so we can employ them now, right? You know, you go, no, like, we don't want that. You're, you're tacitly endorsing the activities, you know? Think about Deshaun Watson at the, you know, Cleveland Browns. Like, it's kind of it's kind of gross, you know? He says there, and it's in Danish, and I can't click the uh, translate button on, on uh, Explit. But he said, have you read the article? Apart from a tabloid headline, right? Which it just says, Astralis maintained working relationship with Hunden, which they confirmed. And RL's clickbait. Well, again, the clickbait would be the headline. I don't, I don't even write those. So, okay. It is relatively sober. Of course, Hunden can take on a job around an e-learning platform. Everything else is pure witch hunting. We are 100% on target for this one. And the fans said, are you being disrespectful? Of course I've read the article. If you've been quoted correctly, it is hypocritical compared to all your tweets about Hunden in the past. If you are so focused on it, why haven't you been transparent about it? And then Steen replies, that, that, uh, that wasn't meant to be disrespectful. I've only heard from several people who had not read the article and who subsequently fully agree with our points. We are fully transparent in my world. The man has been employed by Pixel for a task that he has completed. Can't you see the problem? He sends strats to Astralis and then is discovered. You, and you acknowledge this by giving him a job, right? Thank God. An esports fan with a brain. And then he said, the penalty must be respected no matter what. Chasing a person away from taking a job he has every right in the world to. The job having nothing to do with what he received the temporary sentence for. That, to me, is reprehensible. We also employed Ave. So, yes, you've got a history of employing uh, former cheaters. No one shall be punished beyond action and judgment. And then the fan says, if you can't see the difference between the Ave case and the Hunden case, it's pure comic Ali, uh, guessing comical Ali. The Hunden got banned for trying to give Astralis anti-strats and Astralis signs off by giving him a job. Don't make it sound like a people's court. This is about your integrity. Somebody out there got it, but no one's talking about it. No one's talking about the important part. Crazy stuff. Just as a reminder, right? I, this is why I think there's something more untoward gone on because it makes absolutely zero sense to employ a guy that right you demonized him to your fans you know like they did it they told their fans that he was bad they said you know come to the office and all of that shit just like just crazy uh but hang on I'll, I'll show you the tweet from the time just so we have it on record in the video this was this was right nicola nyholm you know co-founder hunden cadian Askered, that's the former heroic owner, Nico, come to the office and tell me in my face that players were not aware of the coaching bug exploit. Sickened. I respect coach and players immensely, but you have to be honest here, boys. So, like, you were sickened by his behavior. So sickened, you bent every rule you possibly could to find... Well, not even a rule. You didn't bend any rules. You just basically came up with a convoluted series of bullshit so you could cut him a check and pay him some money. I just don't get it, guys. I don't get what that says about the, the industry. Fucking surreal, frankly, to sort of see people, like, pushing back on that. Like, and obviously HLTV aren't going to report any of it, not going to mention any of it, not going to conduct their own investigation or look into it. They're not that type of uh, news organization. You know, they do roster moves, statistics, and occasionally some other stuff, and that's what you're going to get. Just fucking so weird. Like, uh, you know, again, 
why would anyone's first response be to attack me over that that's just the esports problem in a nutshell i'm trying to let the public know by the way if you're an astralis fan might want to know about this if you're a rival of astralis might want to know about this if you were one of the teams affected by hunden you might want to know about this that's what i mean about esports still happening to me like i again had like no issue with striker whatsoever never had an argument with him never had a disagreement just dives in straight straight there your reporting is vague it's like it's not and if it was it you wouldn't be the guy to tell me like name one piece of meaningful work you've ever done it doesn't exist i'm, for, I'm sad to say you know it's just ridiculous